to you live from the country with the third most expensive average airfare. It's time for Destiny Down Under. For the Destiny Down Under podcast, my name is Log Power Slave, and as always, I am joined by Marlon. I love blood sports games and real time event management sloth. We're all here. G'day, shut up, <laughs> fucking people clapping. No time that for that. That actually works pretty good. Real time event management sloth. <laughs> It was fucking Go on, tell, it was... tell everyone what you fucking did seconds before we were meant to go live. Go on. I, th- I thought I'd be real smart, and I failed. <laughs> no, no one should be surprised by that. What I did was release tickets for the general admission part of the Beer Garden of Salvation community event. Which is the event. Which is our event at PAX, and we're going to go into great detail about what that means and everything in literally after I finish having a sook. <laughs> but what I thought was going to happen and what happened was actually – two different things so it basically gave people access to the incorrect ticket type <laughs> and i turned into a very nasty person <laughs> of about, about me, three minutes this, this was a this was a this is a metaphoric dance of what me and sloth were doing dodging punches <laughs> trying to help out <laughs> but sloth whether the withering attacks of me blowing up and being frustrated and managed to resolve the issue, it seems anyway. So uh, all good. But quickly, how are you doing, dudes? And then we'll get into talking about the PAX thing. Uh, I'm pretty good. It's my first Saturday in the last eight weeks that I haven't had to get up at 6.30 and drive an hour and a half to to run a coding club. So, you know, I'm feeling good. I had a stream... (laughs) This morning, and I, I had this, um, I don't know if you saw it, but I actually did some thematic analysis of Destiny law. Wow. <laughs> um, I, I didn't you know, see Matt, I won't lie. Oh, was it fucking Aldi doing the groceries? Well, we've, we've, <laughs> we've upgraded from uh, Microsoft Word to a <laughs> qualitative analysis program. Oh, wow. And uh, look. I know it sounds dumb, but essentially what this program will allow me to do when I finish with it is I can just press a button and it it just visually shows you the connections between every piece of law. That's pretty um, insane. It's a lot of work up front, but if we keep doing it, it'll be a uh, – Bungie's going to ask me for the resource, put it that way. <laughs> 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 like, can we please have that? <laughs> Should be fun. Uh, yeah, you know, that, that was my week. I think. I've been, yeah, just been been cruising along, doing the been, doing the stuff. Been kicking goals. That's all you can do. Good on you, Maddie. It's actually it's, yeah. it's been weird because I've kind of been getting used to doing the Friday night podcast, and I've been enjoying it. It's been it's been fun. It's probably I'm not sure whether it's made for a better podcast or not because we're, <laughs> we're normally all at the end of a big week tucking into a few brews or whatever and yeah. getting a bit loose, but um. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's good to be back in the in the regular in the regular time slot and able to catch sort of the broader audience. So, if you've missed the live streams, we're sorry, but I don't know. You yeah. might go back to doing a bit of variety with them. So, anyway, Sothi, how are you doing? You fucking yeah, tri- I'm all right. At- I fucking you know, fucking here, here, you know. <laughs> oh man, it I is like good. how we just we literally got to like. A split second of professional sloth like solving fucking event programs and then it's straight back to incoherent English with mixed with vape smoke. <laughs> the funny thing is sloth keeps all his professionalism for when he's not on streams. <laughs> like, <laughs> he completely he, he I don't know. Anyway. It's it's probably <laughs> 
It's probably not worth getting into the week that's been really. We're going to fucking let all that water go under the bridge and focus on sharing a laugh. <laughs> but, uh, wave it away. Yeah. Wave all our problems I away. Mean, you know, I mean. It has been a hell that, of a but, week I mean, on the DDU. It's been and... a hell of a week. I fucking, like, <laughs> like because of shit that's going on personally um, between uh, what's happening on my end, what's happening on Log's end and all that sort of thing, we were at each other's throats for yeah. a couple of nights there. Um, like we've been doing this for, we've been doing this. Like I, I think I've had the most time off between the three of us, and I had two weeks off, two episodes off. Matt's had like one episode off here and there, and Logs had no episodes. I've off. had one episode so, off. It was the episode that Matt yeah. did with a non-pig way, way early on, and after looking oh, at it, I decided yeah, I can yeah. never trust anyone ever again. <laughs> but um. I, like we we like when we're not like we're just having one of them things is that we fucking like I took out my fucking anger on fucking log and he yeah, took we... out his anger on me and it's just fucking it all fucking steamrolled into a whole big fucking thing but um and then the child yeah. of the podcast I put my dad pants on and and got in there he <laughs> actually everyone, did which is quite he did, funny. Yeah. grabbed everyone by the collar and go to your room go to your room think about this cool off but, for a second. But the 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 thing you think you got to remember is, guys, is that we're not going anywhere. We're just fucking, <laughs> you know, fighting each other. Yeah. yeah. Um. Just be aware there might be some changes. No, the it, it didn't nearly end vibe. It didn't nearly end. We were just fucking yelling at each other. Um. <laughs> yeah, be aware there will probably be some changes upcoming to the DDU that we will let you know at a later date. So soon, <sighs> TM. Right. Um. So, Pax Oz, housekeeping, log. It's not even housekeeping. It's house building at the moment. <laughs> um, but the deal is thus. We now have a venue. Well, we have had for a couple of weeks, but we've been sort of fine-tuning what we can do and what we're capable of doing with it. The deal is this. Um, we have sort of an inner group. It, it is at the Pax Pub, which is basically like an outdoor pop-up um, bar and food area just outside of PAX, so you don't need a PAX ticket to get in. You, uh, if, Whether you're going to PAX or not, you can come along, uh, and it's completely free. We don't want anything or anything like that. The only thing that we do ask is that you register because there will be loot. It's destiny after all, and the, um, the ticketing stuff is how we're going to go about organizing that. So um, we, we're going to play our cards a little bit closer to our chest because, let's be honest, loot sucks when you get told what it is beforehand no one wants that so we're gonna we're gonna be a little bit secretive on that front but the deal is we've basically got this internal area which which is kind of we we didn't have a whole lot of choice with um and it's basically the original event that we had planned so uh and then outside of that is general admission everyone's able to turn up but you'll be just as involved it's just that there's not the bar there i mean we can only have so many people in the immediate vicinity of the bar yeah and before it, and it becomes a huge community uh a huge security concern and all that sort of shit so without it costing an absolute fortune i mean look if everyone turns up and there's 400 fucking people there then maybe next year touch wood we get allowed to do this again next year if it doesn't end in catastrophe uh we'll be able to push for (laughs) for something more appropriate (laughs) i don't know man it's been a catastrophic week but so Um, so what's going to happen after that what's going to happen after that is basically we we're going to have uh pull everyone together at that point for a couple of hours and then after that we're all going to go to the pub that's basically my plan that's that's all there is to it yeah secondary Ah, pub we'll walk up to the to boat builders well you don't have to go that's probably that's probably a draw card for other people i'm gonna go watch D &D. fuck you go and do it good on you um yeah we will we probably (laughs) should send an email out about maybe following us on the DDU Twitter and we can update people where we're going to go afterwards and stuff. Absolutely. That and the Discord. There is a specific Discord channel in the DDU for uh, the Beer Garden Salvation event. So if you want to jump in that um, and we can all help each other out with respect to, you know, making sure everyone's has a safe and fun time, that is absolutely where we want to be at. Sorry, Sloth. You were going to say something or not? Right. Okay, well. So a little bit of housekeeping, guys. Um, just a bit of an issue there. Before Eventbrite gave away, uh, started giving away tickets to something that was particularly closed in uh, uh, referencing what Log said before, which was the Inner Sanctum. Um, if you... I called it. I called it Heart uh, of the listen, Garden. 
That's smart of mine. Heart yeah, of the garden. Good. Yeah, the yeah. heart of the garden. If if you guys, we're all using guys, different fucking black garden references to describe uh, the same shit. In a sanctum. But um, if, <laughs> if you guys, if you guys have in like today from two o'clock AEST onwards, if you guys have today gotten a heart of the garden um, ticket, uh, we will be cancelling it, and we will need you to uh, re-register under general admission because oh, we we'll had get to, in touch. We, I'll like, shoot you an email. We we yeah. have to we have to email you and all that sort of thing. But if you did register a Heart of the Garden ticket, I'm sorry, we're going to have to cancel that because of um, security concerns, fire concerns, and just cost and all that sort of thing. Well, so, we're already we'll, at capacity, we'll and that. really, the I, amount I'm, of people we're allowed to have in that bar, yep, really. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> that's, I, that's what I want to. I want to just sort of. Um, because I mean, I'm helping you guys, and even it's a bit confusing to me. So let me let me just try to summarize this for everyone, and and you let me know if I'm actually saying the right thing, right? So we originally released um, the tickets, and we have we pretty much reached capacity immediately, which was was, was 150 people essentially, right? Yep. And then everyone went on to a wait list. The plan was because we are at the Pax Pub. And we want to give away stuff. We don't want to just give away stuff to just the 150 people, but actually allow everyone to have a ticket number so we can give it away to not just the 150, but anyone who comes to the event, right? And yeah, the 150 is yeah. like, I don't know, just call it the inside of the pub and the other 200 people on the wait list is in the, in the same area, right? Like not in the roped off area, but still at the venue. You'll right? be in the immediate the plan vicinity. Was My plan is the to, immediate uh, vicinity, I whatever room allows, essentially. Because I, I don't be know out. how. Yeah. I don't know how. We, we're gonna we're so, gonna get beers and we're gonna wander around the entire yeah. thing. Not I wouldn't fucking, worry about just it. Just hang much. out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like it's so, legitimately just a just a numbers thing, guys. So we're we're gonna be hanging out and walking around with Cunts Incorporated. Um and uh, doing doing what we do. <laughs> All right, and so and so the 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 general admission was meant to take everyone off the wait list just to get your normal ticket, you know, yeah. sort of outside the outside of the event, so we could give away prizes and stuff like that. Uh, but what Eventbrite did is it allowed people to jump back into the 150 um, tickets, which we had, were already sold out. So yeah. hopefully I mean, that clarifies what was meant to happen. It's probably worth yeah. saying at this point that this has been, the response to this has completely flawed us and everyone else yeah. involved. Um, yeah. So much so that like we weren't in any any shape, way or form prepared for this. Like before we did this, I was literally ringing up pubs saying, can we get a little table cordoned off for the Destiny community? And they were telling me to fuck off. <laughs> so it's changed a lot sort of over the last couple of months and that wouldn't have happened without, you know, like Felicia who's in in, in chat with that, that that's, works for Reboot and... Uh, Amber at Bungie and all the people who are allowing us to do all this sort of cool shit. So, yeah. I mean, turn up. So. It's a show of force, I guess, in a very peaceful and cool way just to yes. show yes. how much uh, Australia loves Destiny and how willing you are to participate in a community event and then we can uh, we can go and see what happens next year, right? Yeah. That's it. Yeah, so thank, thanks yeah. thanks to all the patience with, with organising this stuff. There's always going to be um, a bit of uh, wrinkles to iron out when we... Um, doing something for the first time with such a large group of people, but um, it's going to be cool. So we great. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So uh, if you feel like you want to thank people, just tweet out hashtag Destiny 2. Thank you, Felicia, and thank you, Amber, and thank you, Beyond Key. Make sure you message Beyond Key. <laughs> Tag him on Twitter and just say, thanks, B. You're thanks, breathtaking. Mate. You're breathtaking. You're, you're breathtaking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. Okay. So, it was good to be able to talk um, about it. Holy shit. Fucking yeah, right, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. There is a second thing here. Uh, so, in uh, in 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 celebration of Shadowkeep um, going uh, coming to Steam and being released and crossplay and all that sort of thing, I decided that I'm going to do a giveaway uh, on my channel. Um, but I'm going. I've I've uh, extended it to Logs, Mats, and the DDU channel. Um, <clears throat> is that if you follow the link that I'm posting in chat right now, it is a Gleam link, basically um, giving away a copy of Shadowkeep 
um, prior to packs for anyone, but I might actually up that to two or three copies depending on how many entries we've got. But uh, follow the links there and uh, it is from the DDU to you guys. At, I mean, that's about as much as I can do because I'm broke as a stroke, but um, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, there you go. Get into it. I did wake up this morning and there was a heap of follows on the DDU account. I'm like, what the fuck's happened here? <laughs> like, if someone said something really good or really inflammatory, I can't work it out. <laughs> oh, I'll be honest. It is- I don't, I don't, I don't notice that I'm so famous. I get heaps of notifications oh, anyway. Oh, fucking. <laughs> Fucking play the fuck off. <laughs> right, and it is only on PC. It is only a Steam version, guys, because uh, I, I've had issues in the past of giving away console copies. and yeah, Console like copies are hard because they're region locked. Yeah. yeah, region locked and all that sort of thing. Right, so ladies and gentlemen, getting us cracking straight into the twob. Oh, mate, um, and we're going to need to. <laughs> it's, it's a beast. It's a huge twob this mm. week. It is fucking something else. Mm. Right. Um, do you want to play the news jingle there? Let's go. Love. Let's let's go. Oh my god! This comes back to you douche vaping like a douchebag. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Oh, yeah. uh, this week at Bungie, we're on a final countdown for the launch. It's been a long summer. Reveals, travels, interviews, updates. We find ourselves that old familiar clearing at the end of the path. This is the final weekly update before we blast off on another adventure. Our new launch trailer is making the rounds. Here it is. If you haven't had a chance to watch it, go watch the goddamn trailer. It's very cool. Mm-hmm. I actually much rather um, them using Led Zeppelin as the music, but... You know, you can't win it all the time. Um, <laughs> it's just because we're old. <laughs> oh, back in my day when they used Led Zeppelin for all the trailers. Back in my day. <laughs> um, right. Uh, so what you'll find, uh, so basically we'll get, we'll, we'll get into it. The combat changes, the PVE damage numbers display. It's just a UI change. Um, basically the general gist of it is they're using fewer dim- fewer digits. Um, they're using fewer digits to make it a little bit more visible and a bit more um readable so to speak because i don't know about you guys but i don't um i i don't uh look at the damage numbers anymore i don't say you don't you don't read (laughs) i I also don't read no i don't read the numbers Um, what do they mean (laughs) but um (laughs) the damage numbers are now built on a new linear curve that is built to last for many years so that's nice um the 999999 damage number is um, capped and it should be significantly reduced or eliminate, eliminated. It is a UI update only. Yeah. It's not measured in damage output. It's just a UI update. Um, right. The PVE dam- uh, difficulty chew- uh, tuning goals. A wide the sweet spot where fighting high-level combatants provides a fun, challenging, and rewarding combat experience for a more enjoyable, enjoyable power climb. Also, players... Uh, looking for greater challenges to confront uh, much higher light enemies. Uh, combatants that are 10 to 40 levels higher take less time to kill and deal less damage. Higher level combatants continue to increase in difficulty up to 100 power levels wow. above the player. When enemies are above the 100 uh, are above 100 power levels or higher, they are immune to damage and the nameplate icons on higher level combatants have been reflected, uh, updated to reflect these changes. These changes affect only higher level combatants out the at level or over level experience remains unchanged, uh, which is nice. So I, that means I gone. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I still remember the um, in the Cosmodrone. Were they just the knights that were? Yeah, the ones that were down in the like the bowels that, of the old buildings and shit, yeah, and they were in that, completely that, bulletproof. <laughs> Yeah, it was underneath the the, yeah. the washed up boats and sh- and shit, and there was like a war mine entrance there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That fuck that those is guys. still one of my best memories. Like, I always thought, oh, what's what are they guarding? What's behind there? How do we get through there? I mean, it turns out it didn't really matter, but <laughs> like, it was cool at the time. Uh, I, I sort of. <laughs> I do like games that, um, you know, it's like that Dark Souls types of games that you enter an area and you know that you're underpowered for that area and you get stomped and you know you need to come back with a bigger yep. gun. 
David and, like uh, it. I'll get my big brother and come back and he'll beat you up. <laughs> yeah. Even, even, even some of the Final money. Fantasies are like that, where you're like, I shouldn't be in this area yet, and you just try, <laughs> try and run around mm. and avoid everything and shit, shit, shit. <laughs> get yeah, out so, of oh, that's think, a good one. Do you remember? Do you remember at the entrance of the like there was a the, the big hive fucking planet invasion dongans and all that sort of thing and there was a big fuck off ogre that you had to jump o- over the side of the map and um come back into and it was just in a room by itself like it's just you know it's just like i don't you, remember you that into- what like do you what you, planet like, on earth on earth <laughs> on earth, earth. What? earth. earth. What first, the earth? firstly what and secondly also what <laughs> <laughs> There was so like you, uh, there was like a public event area, and you had to like you like it was Hive versus um, Fallen, and they were going again, going again, uh, going against each other. And then there was like a little I know what you're talking, next door. I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, I know what you're he talking jumped about down, now. and there was this ogre that. Oh my god! And yeah. there was like the law that was under there. I think there was a. It wasn't a scam. It might have been one of their dead ghosts or whatever ended up in the. In, in, yeah, in yeah, under there. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know yeah, what you're yeah, talking yeah, about. Yeah. Yep. Um, so yeah, uh, that like uh, I like that. I like that they. It's not based on power level. Any, sorry, it's not based on character level anymore. It's based on power level, and the like. We'll get into the soft caps and the hard caps, but there are enemies out there that you just can't touch until much later in the game, and I like that. I like that a lot. Mm. Um, right. Progression and economy changes every season brings with it some tweaks to the power climb. Shadowkeep is going to deliver significant changes on how you grow in strength. We want to make you aware of changes to various various, uh, various currencies and Eververse Trading Company before you set off to power your uh, to power up your gear. Uh, all non-powerful rewards now drop three to zero points below your highest equipable yeah. power level up from 15 to 20 below. So um, I have referenced this uh, last night. I actually thought about this because I wasn't drinking for one, um, but uh, I referenced this. And I'm I sorry, said, what? Um, <laughs> I wasn't drinking on a Friday for once, which is good fucking boy. fantastic. No, it's good for you. Stay um, off it. But um, they've gotten rid of the uh, a lot of the bounties. They've gotten rid of a lot of the bounties. You, they will be wiped before um, Shadow Keep is dropped, which I think is fantastic. Ha, ha, ha. Sucked in. Um, but uh, <laughs> this this has sort of um, made wiping the bounties a little bit easier to swallow, so to speak, yep. um, that you can still level up and you can level up from legendaries, but it's not going to be su- super, super slow. Yeah, I like that. I yeah. like that. Like three. Yeah, I think. I think the points. other thing too is that, like, when you get a drop, and you you're doing content that is at your level or above, and you get a weapon drop, and it's twenty light below where you're currently sitting at. Yeah, you kind of go. It's so oh, frustrating. Do I infuse it, or do I just sit on it, or yeah. is it worth it? Do I put it on and suck up the the power drop, or what? And this, I think, it basically negates that. So you're just going to be at a level that's sort of slowly increasing rather than having well, to juggle that shit. Well, this gets so. rid of that, like having your gauntlets or something. You know, like twenty levels below, yeah. everything else has been dropping, and you've got one piece of gear that's just absolutely destroying you. So now it's like your non powerful uh, uh you know three to zero points below your highest equipable. So you're always like, mm. you're if always you're playing enough, you're always going to be pretty leveled, like evenly leveled in all your gear mm. pieces. And when you actually get powerful gear, it's actually going to boost you a fair bit. Yeah, yeah. that's it. I mean, um, the, other, the other thing that we don't know anything about is the, the cost of infusion and things like that. We haven't really seen that system yet. So... This may be because, I mean, I doubt they're going to make it any more savage than the fucking enhancement core garbage that we've had going on sort of this this past year. But at the same time, I think it, I don't know, maybe maybe they're going down the path of like they, they don't want people to make like the, the deliberate meaningful choice every single time they get a bit of gear, right? You know, like I think mm, that mm, they want people to be able to try different things and varieties of spice of life. It seems to be more the way they yeah. go. Yeah. yeah. Um, year two power for award sources have been changed to legendary awards. So again, doing the destiny dishes, so to speak, um, you don't have to do it in regards to a powerful reward. 
I'm going to use that term until the fucking until the end of time. I think it was an Etsy special, wasn't it? I think it was an Etsy special. Doing the yeah. Destiny dishes is getting on doing your bounties and then getting off. <laughs> doing yeah, the weekly but, milestones. But now, <laughs> like you can still do the year two stuff. Like if you wanted to do EP, if you wanted to do blah, 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 you know, yeah. you can, but you don't have to in regards to a an efficient leveling process. Yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> um, these sources no longer have a chance to drop a random exotic instead of legendary gear. Fantastic. Um, bonus exotics that drop from the nightfall. The ordeal will drop at the ca- character's highest equipable power level. Mm. Under and over leveling activities no longer adjust how much power is received from the rewards. And experience no longer fuels a character's player level, which has been changed to level 50 for all characters. Uh, experience instead progresses the season pass, seasonal artifact mod, and power progressions, as well as the unlocking of destinations for new characters. Experience rewards have been rebalanced with the introduction of the season pass and seasonal artifact progressions. The power granted from seasonal on, artifact so is what? Yeah, what, yeah. what? What happens to character level? I honestly think it's they're ultimately moving to it's make it f- redundant. Yeah, it's at 50 and it, it's probably once you hit 50, it's redundant. And then once you go past 50, you are leveling up your uh, season pass and your seasonal artifact. Wait, experience no longer a few. So how do you progress character level? Well, no, no, no. no you know, so how, you've got, you know you, how you've got your two levels. You've got your power level. That's all your armor and your weapons and shit. Yeah, and yeah, your character yeah. level is the other one. So character level just basically sits at 50 now and doesn't really do anything. And any experience that you would earn that would traditionally have gone into that now goes into progressing you through the season pass content. So, oh, so, you, yeah. so basically if you start a new nothing. character, it's level 50. Level 50. It's at level 50. Yep. Already. Yep. Already. New light. Oh, okay. Might as, I might as well just duck egg it and get rid of it. But what are, why, yeah, legitimately. why is it there then? Maybe they're just a well, pain in the ass in the U.S. Maybe it's the, that they, maybe it's yeah, the cornerstone it's, brick holding entire of Destiny together. Yeah, you never know. It's probably this fucking, <laughs> fucking bit of code. What do you even holding... know, Matt? You don't even play Destiny. I had to fucking beg and <laughs> beg and fucking oh, blackmail no, you to come play no, Destiny no, the feed, other day. Feed him, Matty. No, feed him. Feed let's, him. Let's <laughs> fucking sweep it back to this. So it's like, oh, you want to play some games? Oh, yeah, I'll play some games. No, fucking, no, 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 no. You messaged me at fucking 7 p.m. my time and you go hey do you want to play some games not i'm yeah yeah no worries mate and i'll go come play some destiny he goes nah oh yeah all right and i'll go <laughs> and yeah, what did you fucking make me play gambit you horrid human being wow. i was playing gambit for the only fucking reason to sloth so he can get the sparrow to drop that's how much of a good friend i am okay yeah, oh, that's unquestionable good friendship. I would have just totally ghosted that. I'd have been like, oh, no, nah, something's come up. I, <laughs> I could go. You know what's really, on. You know what's really funny is that I, I jumped in the voice chat the other day and Sassy was in there. I was like, yeah, g'day, mate. Blah, 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 having a chat. And I go, you want to do some gambit with me? And he goes, oh, yeah, righto. And then like 10 seconds later, uh, disconnect from Discord and then I get a message. Yeah, my internet's fucking up. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Yeah, I'll play some Gambit. Boom. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, he's a good egg. All right, anyway, moving on. (laughs) Right. Um, Power granted from the seasonal artifact is additive with the power of the player's equipable gear, but does not increase the power of gear drops. Uh, All existing gear has has had its power increased to a minimum of 750. New characters will begin... Uh, Destiny 2 at power 750 as well. Um, and the power bands for season eight are as follows. The floor is 750. The soft cap is 900. All drops to this point will be upgrades to the most powerful item in your inventory or vault. Um, the powerful cap at 950, beyond 950, only powerful and pinnacle rewards will increase the player's power. All, non-power, uh, all non-powerful and pinnacles are capped at 950. Pinnacles are the only way to raise power above this point, and powerful rewards are equivalent to the highest, uh, to the character's highest equipable power beyond this oh, point. I feel like we need. To, I feel like we need to slow down here. I, I'm, I'm. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Just I'm hang, getting wait lost. One. Wait one. Wait one. Okay. Pinnacle we'll, cap we'll is 960. The pinnacle cap is 960. This is the highest power at which gear drops, known as the hard cap. The seasonal artifact bonus power allows characters to obtain values above this level. So come Tuesday, uh, Tuesday uh, Wednesday morning for us, but come Tuesday for, you know, Americans and all that sort of thing. For Come Shadowkeep. 
everything will be at 750. Yep. Everything will be at 750. That's Every cool. legendary that you get up until 900 will be an upgrade. Yep. Past 900, uh, past 900, only pinnacle. Yep. And powerful yep. rewards will increase a player's power. The powerful cap is 950. Okay. So this is where like your your legendaries will be zero mm -hmm. to three points lower mm -hmm. than your highest. And then past 950, the only way to get um, past 950 is using pinnacle and powerful rewards. Yep. That and that's, that's, that's the seasonal artifact bonus. Well, yep. that's, that's another thing that entirely. That, that allows you to basically continue progressing indefinitely. So it's going to be super interesting to see how that pans out. I really like the idea of it, but holy shit. Like, so uh, when they it, said you... yeah when they said before that um non-powerful engrams uh drop zero to three the sort of in brackets on that is up to 900 really yeah, up to that band really up, up to, to 900 up to, up to 950 900. band yeah up so to you know you you that whenever you get a legendary it will be within zero to three of your power level of your highest gear up to 900 and then it's powerful like all oh, all non-powerful like all non-powerful pinnacle rules are capped at 950 yeah oh, yes. wait, so non-powerful goes up to 950 as well yes no, yes. no, no, yeah. Or not, no, so everything goes up to 950 because it's a soft cap. Yeah. From 750 to 900, from, yeah, from 750 to 900, every legendary should be an increase. This is the from season. From 900 to again. 950, yeah. From nine, 900 to 950, um, your it's, it's a chance that legendaries will not be higher, <laughs> but uh, it will not be uh, as high as your highest. Okay. Um, yep. and your, your pinnacle, your powerful, your prime engrams will be higher, but post 950 is your pinnacle only will yep. get you higher. And that seems to be things like ordeal, nightmare hunts, raids, you know, the true end game experience. I'm proud of you, Sloth. I'm I'm not asking any more questions because I know this is going to go down. No, you guys, no, you guys ask the fucking bully. <laughs> but you I'm not gonna bully fucking, you. you absolutely fucking threw us under the bus and trolled the fuck out of us with that, yeah. with the season pass. You no, I didn't. All I in. You serious. are fucking lying. <laughs> no, I was being serious. My brain hurts. I was being It's fine. Cool. It's Saturday. It, We're it, all just chilling it, out. It, <laughs> just you know what you know what works for me give me an example all right <laughs> okay so if you do a crucible game at <laughs> no, lock, lock, lock is fucking over this oh, so it's does so that make sense, sense? A, re a really quick example go the fastest example right. you're gonna conjure all right crucible you get a legendary if you're between 750 and 900 it's higher than your highest okay between 900 and 950 crucible a legendary it has the chance to be higher but it could be zero to three points lower than your highest from 950 onwards you get a legendary in crucible it will not be higher from 960 onwards only prime engrams and pinnacle engrams will drop higher okay yep yep does that does that make sense you're not even going to play the game so what the fuck why, why am i even fucking explaining this to you <laughs> Matt forever nine hundred. <laughs> right, um, Prime Engrams. I'm just like send help. I can't get over nine hundred. Oh, just get Ninji to carry Prime you through it again. You'll be right. Yeah, 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 be fine. <laughs> right, Prime Engrams. Uh, Prime Engrams now gain charges more quickly, drop more frequently, and have a higher maximum charge cap of nine charges up from six during year two. So this is a a bit of a recompense for um, the bounties being deleted. Is that you will get more Prime Engrams. Yep. Um, the power gains have been rebalanced for the increased frequency, in, including plus three power, down from a range of plus four to plus seven. Players who have completed the prime example quest prior to Shadow Keep's release will earn charges, but those players don't. Uh, those charges don't drop until the character has reached nine hundred power. 
This will help players avoid spending charges early for gains that are most beneficial during the soft cap to powerful cap range. So by that, that reads to me is that once you hit 900, then you stood, should start you'd be using or should start using the prime engram charges, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so it, it like, yeah, it, it, it's recompense for the bounties being, uh, going away, but it is a maximum of plus three. Yeah. So I think it, I think it'll just make the whole seven. thing a lot more steady, right? Like it'll just, yes. yeah. Yeah. Now it's, it, it, it seems less <clears throat> luck based and just yeah. steady, mm. steady mm-hmm. evenly. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Progressing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Bright dust is now earned from completing Crucible Gambit and Vanguard Weekly and repeatable bounties. We chose to grant all of Bright Dust from Ritual Weekly bounties rather than spreading it across the weekly and daily bounties so players could easily earn a Bright Dust without having to make sure to complete every single daily. Players will able to be it will able to do the uh, players will be able to do the repeatable bounties as many times as they like. Any crucible gambit and vanguard completed bounties need to be turned in before maintenance at on the on the thirtieth of September, as these changes will reset them. Other bounties, gunsmith clan, eververse, etc., can still be claimed after after October first. So, touching on that, Tuesday morning, three a.m. Destiny one, Destiny two will go down for Australia. A E S T. Okay, so that is 3 a.m. on Tuesday morning till 3 a.m. on Wednesday morning. 24 hour, um, 24 hour, uh, bloody downtime, downtime, service window. Um, and then, then you, then you can, like, if you're not in Australia, figure it out for yourself because <laughs> fuck your time zone. Um, <laughs> the world is flat, all your countries are made up. We're not getting into it. <laughs> Australia doesn't exist. This is fine. Yes. Right. Um, why so long, Stormtrooper? Because they're moving from Battle.net to Steam. They need to make sure they need to have the time to make sure that the game will run come release. Because if the game does not run at least somewhat smoothly or even somewhat rough, um, Bungie's going like, there's going to be people just screeching at them. Yeah, on Reddit it's, it's, it's worth it. On. It's just... It's worth it yeah. for them. And for us, you know, as, as a guardian that's been around for forever, we've never really seen them have this much time down. And I think this is why. It's it's a big, big transition. Um, there's a lot of new systems coming into play. There's a hell of a lot at stake. So, okay, I you know, like, well, it sucks and there's going to be 24 hours where we have to, you know, go and, I don't know, go, go outside or something. Fucking horrible. But it's worth it. It'll be worth it. Yeah. That's a good one, Sebi. It goes down at reset time the day before Shadow Keep. Okay. <laughs> there right. We go. Um, <clears throat> uh, so, hand in your uh, Gambit, Vanguard, and Crucible bounties before then. Uh, Eververse items no longer dismantle into Bright Dust. They instead grant legendary shards and a glimmer. The new Eververse items of the, for the Season of the Undying will become available for Bright Dust two weeks into the season. Eververse items no longer require Bright Dust to reacquire them or re-roll, re-roll perks, re-roll, um, from collections. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Intercontinentia. We Intercontinentia will. buttocks. We will. <laughs> Go, come on, quick. <laughs> quick Instead, go. they cost the same materials that reward items for of the same type of rarity uh, to use. Uh, fire team medallions have been removed from the store. They have been deprecated into the fizzled fire team medallions and can now be dismantled into Bright Dust to recover their purchase price up to 50 to Bright Dust. The Gleaming Boon of the Vanguard price has been lowered to 150 and Gleaming Boon of the Crucible has been lowered to 500. <laughs> wee wah, wee wah. Um... <laughs> For those playing the home game and listening to the audio podcast, chat uh, in the live stream has just turned into people making wee wall jokes at Slot's expense, <laughs> led by none other than our very own Mylan Games. What sound does you an ambulance so make? Wee wall, wee wall. <laughs> so good. Oh, man. Anyway. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> right. Eververse, Season 7 Best of You on Engram has been retired in its place. Players can now obtain the Season 8 Engram, the nostalgic Engram. Um, the seasonal milestone no longer grants a bounty. Instead, it directly grants a bright engram. Season 8 nostalgic engram is no longer earned at level up. Instead, the bright engram is now included in the free rewards of the season pass that are visible before 11 100. Uh, it is also awarded every five levels after level 100. The Eververse storefront is now available via the director. Eververse bounty <laughs> standard and IGR versions. Um, we will, we will walk you. <laughs> Oh, Why do you guys it. always make fun of me with the way that I speak? Uh, I was talking just wee walls, and maybe I just need to get dwedging as well, okay? <laughs> oh, we're not, yeah, right. Um, we're, we're in dangerous uh, territory now. Any remaining down, down, I need to take this broken fucking down thing off. Too. <laughs> oh, um... Uh, inventory fire team medallions will be broken down into deprecated um, fire team medallions, uh, Hayazi. Um, uh, you can still complete turn and turn in any outstanding adverse bounties until they expire. Players can now store up to a 250,000 glimmer and glimmer rewards from the majority of sources in the game have been rebalanced. Most open world sources, public events, lost sectors and chests have been significantly increased. A passive glimmer gain on kill has been reduced. And in addition to directly awarding Glimmer on kill, combatants will sometimes drop additional Glimmer chunks. Weekly bounties and now award a large amount of Glimmer in addition to their rewards. <laughs> sounds like Glimmer is going to be used for something quite heavily. Yeah, it sounds like it's being freed up for other purposes, doesn't it? Anyway, but anyway. Um, Spiders Exchange. The spider welcomes new opportunities with four open arms and now deals in materials from all planets. However, uh, the spider has noted changes in the market value and has adjusted his exchange rates accordingly. Uh, Glimmer Exchange now cloth, now costs 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 uh, ten legendary shards or twenty materials and yields ten thousand Glimmer. Tangled Shore Daily Bounties no longer award Glimmer, instead providing etheric spirals. Thank you. Uh, in keeping with this competition mm. and weekly wanted bounties no longer award gear but now provide between 3,000 and 15,000 glimmer in addition to the enhancement cores currently offered no longer provide gear interesting mm. the weekly bounty yeah the weekly so wanted. i think i think glimmer is is going to be far more valuable than what it has been in the past it seems it's, inter like. it's interesting given that they've upped the cap for it so we're kind of like well is it, does that mean, it's, it's, is it inflation where the cap goes up but the cost of everything goes up with it? <laughs> it is absolutely inflation. Xur's <clears throat> yes. mm. um, inventory, inventory pool and the fated engram now include World Drop Exotics from year two. And then a patch note preview. Just some bullet points. They've added rally ballot... Uh, rally, uh, bleh. They've added rally banners to Leviathan, Eater of Worlds, and the Spire of Stars. The Shattered Throne dungeon is now available at all times on a three-week cycle. It can be launched and reset from the director. Black Armory Forges are now accessible through a director launch playlist on the EDZ. Now, this is a big change because a lot of people... Well, I say a lot of people, me, I was too lazy to go do the forges because it was just like load in, sparrow cross, <laughs> sparrow. I don't, like, I don't like all the walking you have to do to get there. <laughs> but it's a playlist now. So you can just like yeah. the way that I read it is that, you know, like you start off in Volander and then you go to Izanami, Izanagi or whatever it's called. And then you go to Blar and then you go to Blar and all that sort of thing. Um. I like it. I actually, I actually really yeah, like I think it. It's, I think it's it can... a very friendly change. It makes everything a yeah. bit more accessible. <clears throat> uh, weapon mods are now treated as reusable unlocks instead of consumables. Any mods that you have in your inventory will be converted to unlocks. So make sure that you are hanging on to one of every uh, mod, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, they're gone. Don't put, yeah. it, don't put it into anything. There's no point don't put doing it anything, anything right There's no, there's no keep point. Your mods. Yep. Uh, if the only copy of a mod you have is already in a gun, you'll need to reacquire it or dismantle the gun to unlock it. Um, discarding an enhancement core no longer de deletes an entire stack. I have never seen that bug. It's pretty I've rude. Never seen it, but that's <laughs> Man, a fucking rude bug. Just imagine if you did a 99 stack. And just... 
<laughs> why would you be discarding enhancement calls anyway? What? Yeah, like, that's a good that's, question. That's, that's, that's probably why we've never that's encountered it. That's my point. It. Like, I'm, I'm fucking poor as fuck <laughs> with enhancement calls. They need to leave that. Um, if you're stupid enough to dismantle one, you deserve to not have any, so you appreciate them in the future. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> Right. Um, oh, yeah, Boris Allison, this is a fucking yeah. fantastic change. I love this. Borealis and Hardlight now match the prism modifiers when changing elements on reload, rotating through void, arc, and solar. So instead of forcefully changing the element by reloading two or three times, every time you reload, if it changes, mid, it changes between when you empty the magazine and then when you reload and it goes from arc to solar or something, it goes from arc to solar in the gun. And it is fucking amazing. Wait, that what? Is an, what? So the Borea, the Borealis and the hard light have three, like you have yeah, to, you yeah, yeah, hold, I know, I know you have to hold reload to change it. Yeah, yeah you, you hold reload to change. Um, <clears throat> when prism modifier is on, the gun will match the modifier in itself. Really? Yeah. 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 But what, so can you change it or not? I'm sure you can. But when you so, reload, it'll instead of instead of um, like so for hard sure load, instead it... of auto defaulting to void, if the modifier is arc at that point in time, it'll reload arc. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. You kind still of, have but to I, I, to I like on reading it. I assumed that there was like some kind of glitch there that stopped those guns functioning as intended, right? But hang on, Sassy said no, so you're wrong. <laughs> No, 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 no. The, the way that I the way that I read it is that if if you are on void and the modifier is void, when it changes to arc, when you reload, oh, when okay. the changes to arc and it had void in it, it will change to arc. I think. The, oh, okay. I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah. chat's helped. Yeah. Yeah, it's just changes um, the sequence. It changes the cycle of elements to match yeah. the cycle. Yeah. Of yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. 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 Oh, chat! Right. You're so clever. You guys should go make your own podcasts. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Go and organize um, events because that seems to be why I can't fucking read anything at the moment. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Yeah, I, I hear you. Um, fix an issue where Hunter's Tempest Strike melee ability couldn't be performed if the sprint button key was set to hold. Ah, fucking. Who just cares? delete Hunters. Hunters. They're just fucking Garby. shit. Um, the Phoenix Protocol health perk will no longer award bonus super energy on kills and assist to warlocks inside a Well of Radiance if they do not also have the Well of Radiance Attunement of Grey subclass uh, equipped. Fix an issue where allied golden gun projectiles will note going through uh, banner shields. Fix an issue where Queen's Wrath perk for the exotic wish ender bow wasn't correctly highlighting players if their shield was depleted and players who obtained the salute emote in the past can now correctly select, select it in their um, collection multiplayer buddy emotes will now have a visible indication of where a player can stand to interact and initiate the emote and failing the first encounter for any black armory forge will no longer award planetary <laughs> destination materials that one's been coming for a while <laughs> For a long time. <laughs> Look at that little, um, they, they even put an the, email. They, they even put the little, little eyes in there going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Disapproving. Yeah. 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 Um, now this is a fucking, this is a fantastic, uh, I, I, I think it's a fucking really intelligent way to do things is that I'm going to preface this by saying <laughs> that some of the most highly used and highly regarded dps weapons in pve and the the um easy some of the easier weapons to use in pve uh sorry pvp rather um have been the pinnacle weapons your yeah, mountain tops yeah. your recluses your lunar's howl <clears throat> not so much the not forgotten because a lot of people don't have it um but they're not forgotten uh sorry the the lunar's howl um yeah Re- recluse uh, recluse fucking 20, 20, mountain top. 21 yeah, 21% delirium. Um, instead of having pinnacle weapons, they're having ritual weapons. So pinnacle weapons. Um, and I did see a tweet from this. It did come from Paul Tassie, so I don't know if it's fucking 100%, but you can still earn the pinnacle weapons come Shadow Keep. The old ones. Yeah, the old ones. Yeah. 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 You can still earn them. Um, right. So from the Destiny dev team, the decision to stop creating extremely powerful pinnacle weapons was made by, uh, for a variety of reasons. The first that it, it, uh, the first was that the band of which pinnacle perk can exist is actually quite small. And most of them far exceeded the efficacy that 
they should be have been at. Another issue is that they cause problems in the player ecosystem, particularly in the case of crucible pinnacle weapons. Due to the nature of PvE and PvP, anything that works well in PvP is likely going to be extremely effective in PvE as well. This forces players into the crucible if they want the best loadouts, even the title of pinnacle set a variety of unrealistic expectations. Rather than being absolute height of legendary power, they were supposed to be interesting novelties to chase. These problems became more pronounced when more of them we produced. In the end, we decided to move away from pinnacle weapons. If you manage to collect them all, we hope you enjoy them. Right. Um, they also made a lot of exotic weapons not exotic. Yeah, right. Like there was no reason to run. I mean, you think about like, I don't know, I can't even remember what exotic submachine guns there are, but there's no way in the world you'd run any of them in front of Recluse because... Oh, no, Huckleberry, Huckleberry, I mean, Huckleberry, Huckleberry yeah. Risk Runner. Risk um, Runner is pretty good. Oh, risk, Risky's up yeah, there. But but like, honestly, I'd still run a Risky after a Recluse. <laughs> like I, I would, the recl yeah, that proc, the, the second you kill something with Recluse, it gets increased damage. It's fucking you know, that, stupid. That's Risk Runner is definitely very um, situational, whereas Recluse could be anything. Yeah. You know, like it's... Yeah, it's just um, nuts. And it, it, definitely, it definitely removes the use of exotics, even though some exotics are just like meme exotics, but um, they have been made, like a lot of SMG um, exotics have been made completely... Not unusable, but um, irrelevant. Yeah, I think it, it was an ecosystem thing, and they they, they touched that in that they kind of made them the must have weapons. They made exotics redundant, and they made most other <laughs> legendaries kind of paling comparisons. So they were they were you had to have yeah. them, you know. Like really, yeah. if you were you go and look in the crucible, go on to something like Destiny Tracker or whatever, anything that keeps track of what weapons are the most prominent in <laughs> PvP, they'll. 99% of the time be pinnacle weapons or Do, you know the interesting thing or... it's sort of like the pinnacle weapons is sort of like the vault of glass weapons from D1 like yeah. if you weren't running Fatebringer, Fatebringer. or Vision of or Confluence yeah. or what was it wait there was a shotgun too right uh, uh, what was it called anyway Fel, Fel Winters Fel Winters Live yeah was Fel Winters was one it was yeah, a, yeah, yeah you sort of get what I'm saying. At like the pinnacle weapons used to be raid weapons, and if you didn't but have even, the raid weapon, like mm. you know, they often were the go-to legendaries. Essentially, even even if um, like once people got reckless, like the weapon chase had ended, and they're quite happy to use it in everything. You know, mm. and that's yeah. just that, like. Well, that's what they're saying because because they made them good for PvP. They were they were also extraordinary. Yeah, they kind of double PvE. good for mm. PvE. Like, dude, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can you can absolutely shred just about anything with a recluse, and it's a submachine gun. It doesn't really make sense, you know. Like, especially can, anything where there's lots of small of arms enemies on a fucking sniper too. You can get behind your rally barricade, never reload it, shred the shit out of it, everything. It was yeah, yeah it was busted. <laughs> yeah yeah okay um right so the reduced effectiveness of the following perks in pve uh, uh rampage kill clip swashbuckler multi-kill clip desperado surrounded man uh, master man at arms master master of arms and onslaught in general these perks use the same damage multipliers for pve as they did in pvp the change to rampage does not affect the huckleberry uh, onslaught and desperado now change bullet impact values while activate uh, active in pve and surrounded no longer multiplies precision damage on top of base damage as it was benefiting of some weapon types more than others as a result. Legendaries have become too powerful overall. In many cases, they even outclass exotic primary weapons. So we're walking them back a bit. All the way back in Destiny, uh, Destiny 1, we had a perk called Crowd Control, which was yeah. Rampage's predecessor. And Crowd Control capped out at a bonus of plus... 15 percent extra damage at this point in destiny 2 rampage caps out at about plus 67, 67. which is a 447 uh, percent increase from the original iteration you know what i'd be okay if they change rampage back to what crowd control was i think that's what they're saying that they are <laughs> yeah I think that's if what's they walked happening. it back that far that'd be i'd be okay with that's that that's the thing and they're, they're perks that like they don't make sense in that like you can literally pick off one thrall and then have Rampage up to go and deal with a major. So is is this the first time we've seen modification separate from PvE and PvP? 
Uh, no. This is just in, PvE. It was in Destiny these 1 as well. The, these are just Destiny the... No, but in Destiny 2, this is the first time we've seen it, yes. Yeah. Is that right? Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head. I don't want to say yes and be wrong. Yeah. But, okay. but this is the I don't remember another example weapons. of it, so if anyone else has got one, cool. But we've always been <laughs> talking about modifying PvE from PvP yeah. and making changes from that, and this is... This is that, right? Yeah, no, I mean, I think this is valid in that, you know, like you, as long as people understand what they get out of them in each situation, I think it's fine. As long as they can cl yeah. clearly communicate the difference, it's all good. Um, now, the, the, now, this is the thing that confuses me is that they've got three ritual weapons and the ritual weapons have just, it, it looks like right here, right now, that looks like that they've just renamed Pinnacle, but we'll see. We shall see. We'll, well they are. They are just renamed Pinnacle, um, the ritual. Yeah. But Vanguard, the edgewise, it is a Vanguard <laughs> MG. Now, um, Etz actually posted this the other day. Imagine if, like, they had a 1940s um, uh, design, like American plane design, where it had, like, the, the picture of the um the girl and then like stripes for kills and how many they've made and like that sort of 50s 40s 50s design type of situation as a ornament yeah does that make does that make yeah. sense yeah i would be all about it i would, I would be, all, I would be about all about that. it yeah <laughs> it looks cool um, it looks it's probably the coolest looking vanguard weapon i've seen in a while to be honest it's it kind of looks like a really massively angry um uh what's that secondary slot pulse rifle that's the crucible one, last position. It's kind of got ah. that that kind of look to it. Oh, but yeah, it's, yeah. It yeah. is very a very nasty looking gun. So good. I think um, the, the next one's crucible. very interesting though. <laughs> mm. We've got crucible uh, ritual, which is Randy's throwing knife. Who the fuck um, is Randy? Do you know? Apparently, oh, Randy I, was part of Redrix's PVP uh, fire or Redrix's fire team, according to Anon Pig. Does no, any... look, look in the scope. Yeah, so it's got that it's got that little horns thing. It's got Shax's necklace, but it's a Shax's necklace oh, as is, well. Like, it is too. yeah, yeah. Oh, like this is how so fucking this, this is how Shax stupid. Is Randy. Everyone's Shax saying is Shax's Randy. first name is it's Randy. His previous <laughs> Randy, name, Randy Shax. <laughs> Randy Shax. <laughs> I just, it just makes me on. think of fucking Randy Mars from South Park. <laughs> 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 just burnt the virgins. They took care Randy Shacks. Randy Shacks. <laughs> right. And then the Gambit <laughs> Pinnacle. The, the Gambit Pinnacle, which is the exit strategy, which is a uh, SMG. <laughs> Next time I'm yeah. at, I have to fill out a form that I'm not committed to. I'm writing down the name Randy, Randy Shacks. Shack. 100%. <laughs> Randy Shacks. Uh, a meetup meet in space. It sounds like a porn parody of fucking Destiny 2 where fucking Mara is let's, played. Let's by. not go into Destiny 2 porn parodies. We'll be here all week. All right. Sorry. Um, right. Uh, to set it straight, so some of the dates have changed. Um, in regards to the launch, um, but there was a shot of Trials of the Nine armor in the launch trailer by mistake. We wanted to clear up any confusion and let players know that Trials of the Nine will not be attainable in the season of the Undying. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, basically, it kind of alludes to the fact that at some point they're going to come back, right? Like he's very specifically saying they will not be available in this season. <laughs> like. There's, How did you know a, it was trials specifically trials of the nine armor? Did they say it was that? white and blue? Yeah, it was white and blue oh, okay. and looked exactly like trials of the nine. Armor. <laughs> no, all right, well, fucking yeah. flip me over. Right. And put me <laughs> Um, we've also had to revise our gameplay calendar for Season of the Undying. The menu of, menu of action is the same, but we're adjusting some of the timing on the Nightmare Hunts. The new schedule is is that the Hero Nightmare Hunts are on the 8th of October and the Legendary Nightmare Hunts are on the 15th. There you go. Cool. Uh, back when we were talking about finishes and some of the mods that go with them, we talked about how one of the mods enabled you to spawn heavy ammo for your fire team if, if when you executed a finisher. That was still a flux in uh still in flux at that time and for balance reasons we ended up making a mod that will spawn heavy ammo for yourself and a mod that will spawn special ammo for your fire team hmm okay mm. 
Mm. So about one mile an hour, you spawn here. So what's doing now? So you get, you get heavy ammo for, yourself, for you, heavy and ammo for you. Gets special, special for everyone else. Okay, so what they said is we've tested it and it's fucking way too strong. Everyone's <laughs> just finishing it. everything. It's fucking busted. <laughs> we've stopped it. Mm. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, because oh, because obviously it's like, all right, guys, we need heavy ammo. Time to do DPS. Someone do a finisher on a on on an enemy. Everyone grab heavy. DPS time, okay, next cycle, someone do a finisher, yeah, grab yeah. heavy. It'd absolutely be that. Or it'd be just everyone using that one to finish every single possible enemy with finishes so everyone always had full heavy. It's just purple everywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It'd just be little treasure boxes. It'd be like fucking Christmas. It'd be horrible. Well, it'd be great, but it'd be horrible. And then the- um, <laughs> I sort of so- miss that. I used to love when you could just leave an ammo brick there knowing that you had heavy when DPS came around. Yeah, when you needed it, you could you could just trundle over and get it. The other thing I missed, yeah. and it was actually the five year anniversary of the nerf of the original loot cave. Was it Thursday? I think it was Thursday our time. I think it was Thursday. Fuck, yeah. it doesn't seem that long ago. I remember standing five on five years. Hill. Five years. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Look at Matt. He just um, went into this. What have I been doing with my life? <laughs> what have I been doing with my I mean, I haven't got any better. I mean, today I was literally fucking streaming qualitative analysis of Destiny Law. <laughs> you, you, you've definitely got carved out your own niche, haven't you? <laughs> um, anyway. Now, uh, next part is a, uh, a, a story from Nigel. Uh, you might know Nigel from the Shadow Throne right along at the wonderful fan made a video during the St. Jude's charity stream. Uh, basically, um, he uh, he he puts up a story about how he found out that he was gay, which is fucking amazing. Go and read uh, it. Good on it's him. not worth us paraphrasing it's an, it. it but... I, I can't paraphrase it. It's definitely something you should go and read. So good on you for putting that out there, Nigel. Um, uh, so for, in regards to celebrating the Seattle Pride Parade, um, the uh, Nigel has helped set up the Trevor Foundation and other LGBTIQA plus charities. Um, <clears throat> and he created pride pins um, that if you buy on the Bungie store, it unlocks a emblem in game, which looks fucking fantastic. That's fucking cool. Good on Very you, Nigel. Cool. Thanks, mate. Yeah, that's that's um, unreal. I love this sort of stuff. I love it. I mean, and you know yeah, what? There's so always going to be some that. fucking um, idiot out there who's going to complain about it. Just make sure you backhand them as savagely as possible because at the end of the day, they deserve to be told to shut up. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> So yeah, give that a read. I don't. I don't. I'm not. I'm not going to fucking um, read that. I'm not going. I'm not going to do that. Uh, read that poorly and besmirch yeah. that personal story. It's definitely something that yeah. you need to read. Right, Bungie Rewards, the world's first belt, and some of the emblem uh, emblems you can earn in our upcoming Pinnacle PVE activity, and then the raid jacket. I don't like it. I'm just Why? a bit. Yeah, no, no, look. I'm just going to say this. How many jackets do you need? Because <laughs> most anyone who's serious about <laughs> these pinnacle rewards is probably at the point now where they've got more jackets than they'll go through in a decade. I, I'm still waiting for my fucking carried Crown of Sorrow jacket. You're still- never going to fucking wear it. When are you of gonna course wear it? I am. Why would not? No, you're not, because it's something Destiny-based and you don't play Destiny, cunt. Yes, he does. He wears lots of Destiny merch, though, so... Yeah, Just so people that's know. True. That's that's <laughs> mainly because Destiny Bungie sent me a whole bunch of Just merch shirts. when I wasn't fat, and they were all like large and extra large, and I put on twenty kilos since being a YouTuber, <laughs> and they all fit me. Mm. Um, yeah, I I don't like the jacket. I think it looks very. Um, I don't, I'm not going to say I don't like it. I just don't eh. think I'd want a jacket. That's what I'm saying. It's it's very brown. I, I live in the tropics. I, like I barely wear barely wear a fucking shirt. Yeah, you are the time you are not the jacket. you are not the market audience for a jacket. No. <laughs> um, there is a shirt. Um, uh, you can purchase as well. Uh, I like the question mark on it, but that's good. Hmm. <laughs> Right. Any player who beats the Garden Salvation Raid and claims their code before the weekly reset of the 15th of October will be eligible to purchase the Raid Jacket through Bungie Rewards. We've given you some extra time to power up in this time. We know many of you do not enjoy rushing through content, so even if you aren't ready to take on the Raid before the 15th of the 10th, any player who completes Garden of Salvation during the Season of Undying 
will be eligible to purchase a special raid t-shirt through Bunny that's cool Rewards. but that's great. the shirt has spoilers on it so we'll share what it looks like after the raid is completed <laughs> Ooh, well, the on. shirt has spoilers on it well <laughs> It's just like What's on it? something like Prince Aldrin's like alive and we're just, just putting a bullet in his face or something. Just Prince Aldrin, what a fuck with. <laughs> just... <laughs> yeah, this is why I don't work in he's merchandising. Probably, he's not even Aldrin anymore. He's probably like fucking Steve or something. <laughs> right. Um, now we talked about the 24-hour maintenance. That is reset Tuesday till reset Wednesday. The, the end, games yeah, will be down. Basically. That's it. Just um, uh, hug your now, family. You can, you can um, uh, preload Destiny 2 on Steam, which includes the preloading of New Light and Shadow Keep. Since New Light makes Destiny 2 accessible to everyone for free, no purchase is necessary to preload. Existing console players will be able to preload update 2.6.0 during the maintenance leaving up, leading up to the launch. Rip PlayStation 4 players and the moment we confirm that downloads are available we'll sound out sound off from the support links provided above um make sure that you link your bungee account to steam Do before it. or it will not be part of this process. if you haven't linked your if you haven't linked your account and you play on battle.net and you want to move to steam do it now today do it before the reset do it before the reset um uh, yeah. It has, it has the operate order of operations. It says link your Steam account to your BungieNet profile, then enable cross save, then download on Steam. And that's about it. That's it. Yep. That's the recipe. Yeah. Right. Um, and just PC stay the, stay the fuck away from any like silver transactions. For, the, yeah, for a few days, buy just stay the fuck away from it, please. Sake. I don't want to hear his sort of stories about people getting ripped off and shit like that. And don't yeah, start any new characters when your fucking things don't cross over. Just wait. <laughs> just fuck. Wait. Right. Wait. Um, PC migration and new characters on Steam following the launch of Shadowkeep and Destiny 2 update 2.6.0 on October 1st. Players who link their Steam account to their Bungie.net profile will be able to manually trigger PC migration. Players should be aware, however that any new characters created on Steam before performing the PC migration will be overwritten when players migrate from Battle.net. This will result in a potential loss of new characters and gear, as well as silver Eververse items and season passes if purchased on these new characters before performing the PC migration. To make things as simple as possible, here's the recommendation for the order of operations before players who perform PC migration to Steam after Shadowkeep launches on October 1st. I don't know why I did you that. You are an it's odd... Fine. Odd man. <laughs> yeah, but you committed to it. And that's what yeah. makes it special. I'll allow it. Right. Um, so make sure you do that. There is a uh, there is a whole thing there. So, yep. Uh, reminder, Destiny 2 and silver purchases on a Battle.net. Um, do not purchase silver on Battle.net. Oh, I think, when I read all this shit, I'm just thinking, man, there's a lot of fucking teams working really hard to make sure this oh, goes dude. smoothly. There's a lot of moving pieces here right now a lot mm. yeah mm -hmm. have you guys mm -hmm. downloaded it yet no yep. how big I've is not, it I've, I've not done mine wait 79 a... gigabytes 79 wait so gigabytes? why do you have to re-download it from Matt, steam Can't because it's from a completely just, different just, service just, just, just download it's a di like, the I've seen, whole i saw this whole again. bitch going around a lot but when you think about it the way the files are structured and everything is probably somewhat different Right, okay. like it's not just here's the game, launch it this way. It's you know, so it's just it's just got to be done that way. It sucks if you got a shit internet connection. Uh, maybe go around to someone's house and download it <laughs> there, or do what you got to do to get it done. But um, yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's just the way it's got to be, little darling. Yep, that's we'll the way right it's gonna be, little darling. <laughs> right. Um, make sure, uh, as another reminder, players should be aware that any Battle.net code they possess for Destiny 2 content must be redeemed on their Battle.net account before they perform the PC migration. You will lose that license if you do not do it. And you Wait, have what? To what do I have it. to do? You don't have to do anything, if you have per <laughs> You don't have to do anything. But if you have not um, redeemed a any code for Destiny 2, whether it's DLC or the game itself, before... September 30th, before they do the PC migration, 
you will lose that license. Yeah. Basically, the redemption needs to go through Battle.net before the transition, the end. If you don't, so long, sucker. <laughs> but again. Now, this is a, this is a, th- oh, this is a thing that kind of... Um, but that, that means it let's me not sp- just like game codes, it's like emblems and everything as well. Yes. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, emblems are a different kettle of fish when you think about it because they're, 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 they're redeemed, they're battle, they're, they're battle they're redeemed through Bungie, so they're probably different. But Oh, no, it, sorry. They are go through. They do go through Bungie. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm true, thinking, yeah. I'm thinking that was, I was... For some reason, my brain thought that was Battle.net. Yeah. Right. Um... Sloth's just oh, yelling no. at a cat. Lost laugh. No, he's all right. Meow. Meow. Right. Um, Steam limited user accounts. Now, this is a fantastic thing that I think is fucking amazing. Uh, next week, Destiny 2 officially launches on Steam, but before it does, we'd like to make players aware of Steam's limited user accounts. In short, any player whose account has spent less than $5 USD on the Steam store will have limited access to community and social features that are commonly used for spamming, phishing, and other abuse. This will yeah. apply to any Destiny 2 player new to the Steam platform who migrates from Battle.net. For more information, please see Valve's limited user accounts support article. So I can see that being... Got him. Um, <laughs> if you have multiple free accounts and you're doing comp, <laughs> if you're doing comp... Um, like if you're you're like living up a, a comp thing and you're trying to sell the account <laughs> or something like that, um, you will not be able to uh, do any of the multiplayer stuff, like uh, as in like uh, join groups and all that sort of thing, until Was... you spend five dollars on um, Steam. Steam. Was that from Team America? Log. We've got them, boys. Is it? <laughs> no, or was that, that, was, that was Barack Obama when they fucking killed Osama bin Laden. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I don't think you said boys though at the end. I might have had lived that. We got him. <laughs> okay, so that's that's one way to protect um from la spam. From la fuckwits. Um basically guys, if you are in, in regards <laughs> like uh, we've been on Steam, all three of us have been on Steam for a long time. Um, but if you get any sort of friend request from someone you don't recognize or you get a message from someone you don't recognize for the love of fuck, do not open it. Yeah, just keep it. Keep like it right, Steam, right. Steam, Steam is uh, a little bit more open. Open quotes um, in regards to the way that they they do like their social stuff. So if you get a message from someone you don't recognize or anything like that, do not open any links. Do not. I probably don't open the message. Delete that shit. Like it's just. Just don't do it. Right. Um, the Premonition Legendary Pulse Rifle, uh, following the launch of Shadowkeep next week, players will be able to view new items added to Destiny 2 using the in-game collections. Before then, we'd like to make players know, aware of a known issue in one particular weapon listing. Following the launch of Shadowkeep, the collection listing for the Premonition Legendary Pulse Rifle will state that it is found by exploring the moon. Um, this weapon's specific source is actually the new dungeon, which will become available sometime after the Shadowkeep's launch. Players who encounter other issues following the launch of New Light Shadowkeeper and Steam PC should report them to the hashtag help forum. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, from hold on, Super why, why Red did, why Falcon. Why did they have to, hold on, why did they have to say that that was from a dungeon? Because yeah, there they will could be just... people that will fucking whinge about it. I feel like exploring the moon it... Like, it kind of goes just, without saying. Uh, guess what? You might go and kill the first fucking thrall and just get it. <laughs> you know Doubt what people it. are like in this community. If they don't fucking yeah. find it in the first two days, they'll go, ah, it's bugged. Ah, it's bugged. <laughs> fucking get Then they have to go through bug reports. They're like, ah, the fucking gun's bugged. Ah, fuck you, Bungie. It's fucking broken. You know what? Shut up. Fuck. Beautiful. Right. Oh. From um, Super Red Falcon, uh, embrace your fears. Destiny 2 Shadow Key trailer. And uh, from Ceridus, Ceridius, uh, Ceridus. Duke 44, Duke 44, seventh column, all headshots, kills all my LMs. Okay, so yay. Congratulations on that, I guess, Ceridius. I mean, good, good job on fears. getting the, the clip of the up there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, good on you. All right, well, that, that was the um, monster fucking twop, ladies and gentlemen. That was... Holy shit, are you all right? You need to go and have a fucking 
a fucking I'm, valium I'm, and a lie down I'm, there, gobber or <laughs> well, let, let me let me put it to you this way, log is that I'm going to go make a coffee. I'm not going to take my head, my wireless mic with me because it was sounding like shit before. Um, but what I want you to do is uh, ask some questions, and uh, yeah, I'll be back. So shut up. Slothy, tell him. Hey, what um, the fuck's that about? So, <laughs> so um, people I'm gonna, have I'm actually open up the chat. Getting, I'm gonna open up the chat. Yeah, open we'll the chat that. up. People have been getting um. The collector's edition already, which has the law book with it. And I haven't read it yet, oh, but I have no. been sent the text of it. Oh, well, um, one, of you, one of you fucking law ninjas. <laughs> I have many <laughs> law ninjas out there that form a, an angry law mob. Um, Master, Master Mylan son. <laughs> but I don't think, I don't think anyone's uh, posted anything yet. I'm sure it's probably on Reddit and that kind of thing. I did hear that. You know, there's obviously the embargo has been lifted from anyone who went to Bungie. So yeah, I've been seeing the, was it a strike mission and half a story mission and the yeah, Nightfall? I, I've, honestly, I've stayed away from it. We we, yeah, kind of, we go through this song and dance every time it comes up to a new fucking uh, content release, right? And I've just sort of gone, what? I mean, it, it's good. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I kind of, I love that like Bungie do this to support you know, the creators that help talk about their yeah. game and keep the community yeah. active. And yeah. it's a great way of them giving back to people like Dado who thoroughly deserve it. But for me, I kind of, I still, part of me still wishes that we could just all go in blind and we could fucking find out and, yeah. you know, do it that sort of way. I understand it's a, it's a PR thing and it's easy for me to say that being a dude who would be absolutely playing it anyway. But, you know, I'd, yeah, I, I kind of wish that we didn't end up in this situation, but. It yeah, but is. that being said, I still feel like overall there's been less spoilers than. Yeah, normal. well, as as Richard, as Lowline said in the chat, there's been no data mining. There's been nothing like that sort of an happening. API. Yeah. yeah, maybe that's because of the transition to Steam. Like no one can get. <laughs> but then again, I mean, people are people are doing the download, so. I don't know. Yeah, but someone was. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's a bit harder to get in there. Well, I mean. I wonder if this is going to change how we get stuff on Ishtar Collective. I don't know. I don't know. I can see the stress in your face about it, though. You can, maybe you're going to need that new system that you're talking about building. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, when I first started Destiny Law, okay, and you'd imagine this, I used to have to manually, I used to have the PlayStation up. No, I didn't because it wasn't on in-game yet. I used to have to bring up Bungie's website and fucking type it out or copy and paste it. Oh, wow. That's fucking, yeah. That's, that's what a... did I used to transcribe? I used to have to write something. Maybe it was um, whatever was it in the Grimmel cards. Anyway, it was a pain in the ass. It was, it was really difficult. I, I, pre- I, I appreciate you, Matt. I appreciate you. That's good. I'm, I'm <laughs> glad that there's an easier way now because, I mean, when you think about it, you were pretty rusted on and into it, but for anyone else who just wants to cursorily look at it because they're interested, it's got to be easy, right? And the easier it is, the more people it gets in. So it's good that there's tools yeah. like Ishtar and that out there. Anyway, if you've got any questions and you're rocking on in, in the live chat, uh, please fire away now. Um, we'll we'll do our best to get through as many of them as we can before we wrap up. But, um, dude. It's exciting. Hey, Slothy's back. That was that was the quickest coffee manufacturing I've ever seen. It was up there. He's good. There he is. He's giving everyone the thumbs up. He's uh, he's oh, and tearing. Axe panel survey. Uh, I mean, we re- just, released just that like, out. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll um, I'll post it. Beforehand. I'll post the link to the Pax panel survey in the description of this video. So anyone who hasn't done it yet, please jump in and fill it out. It's um. It's pretty tongue in cheek. It's good. You'll 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 have a good time doing it. It'll um, hmm. you know, you'll get to you get to put a bit of a dig in on <laughs> some of the things in Destiny you might not like so much and things like that. So it's good fun. Obviously, the periodic table of awesome uh, doing that and, and running the panel and all of that. So uh, we're we're involved to some extent, but we'll keep under wraps what that is for now. But um, yeah, definitely get in and and do that and and um, you know i mean the more the more responses they get the better their segment for it will be it was pretty pretty epic last year i'm told maddie so it's uh, yeah, it was a really good, good time yeah. Yeah. yeah um 
Yeah, I mean, Matt, like you, you used to go through all the Destiny and write it out and all that sort of thing back when you were actually playing Destiny and not just <laughs> oh god, you're like a broken record. You're like a broken record and all that sort of thing. Yeah, yes, look, yes. Right. look. When when it, cool. when a new release comes out, I play the absolute hell out of it and I enjoy it. And then I go into a little dungeon and I just read everything and I make content. All right, so get off my back. <laughs> you play Tarkov. Shut up. No, you know what? Yeah, I, I, I'm I, a I gamer. I see my gamer chair and my gaming microphone. I'm allowed to enjoy other games. Shut up. Can someone clip hey, that, please? By that the way, pathetic. I'm a gamer. By the way. <laughs> Right. Know, it was meant to sound pathetic. Yeah, it was a good um, job. <laughs> you are pathetic. We got him, right. boys. So, um, <laughs> fuck you guys. I'm going home. Huh? You're already <laughs> home. <laughs> Screw you guys. <laughs> right. A question from Fred Gaming. Do you think they w- should have hidden more stuff at PAX? We know <laughs> almost every gun and gear set. I like being surprised. I don't think we know. I like gear, like armor sets. We know some of them. Um, we know about the rocket launcher. And we know about the 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 uh, ritual weapons. That's it. Yeah, that's, I, I, that's really it. Uh, Unless a, you've been watching fucking Rick Ackes and a few other choice YouTubers that actually revealed like strike information recently, but we won't cover that on the podcast because it's spoilers. Like we've we've come to the conclusion a few times, especially when we're talking with the boys, is that Bungie this time around, there's been they've tempered the hype from them. They've tempered what information they've uh, sent out and all that sort of thing. Obviously, people have seen shit at PAX West and all that sort of stuff. But I think there's a lot more to the, the, to this content and there truly, truly is a lot more to this content than what we've actually seen. I don't think – I like I'm at the point now with Destiny where I don't think seeing something is – like, I mean, missions and stuff, yeah, that's one thing. Like, I don't want plot spoilers or anything like that. But – like guns, like just getting to look at a gun, that that's that's nothing. I mean, if you told me back when I first got my hands on a spare rations that at some point it would be the most prized gun in the game, I would have probably laughed because I didn't give a shit and no one did at the time. So I don't think guns are really like a big deal until you get them in your hand or get them in your digital guardian's hand and understand what they're actually about, you know, like other than just getting to look at them. I think looking at things is cool. It's, it's hype. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to see them release everything. I'm sure they haven't. I'm sure there's things up their sleeve, but yeah, that, that's kind of my mm. loser's shit take on it. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I just, I think there's going to be a lot more content than what people actually believe. So um yeah apparently yeah uh, just... i saw i saw a non's tweet about the uh collector's edition um book and apparently it's a good um uh epilogue uh leading up to chatter prologue, Keep. prologue. prologue. Mm. yeah um i'm probably pretty good pretty on my logs <laughs> get out <laughs> i'm get here all week there. try the beef see you. <laughs> <laughs> Try the beef. <laughs> right on. Um, yeah, um, right. not too many spoilers apparently. So, favor uh, from uh, Jathal, favorite drinks. Uh, I don't drink often, but when I do, uh, Great Northern. Yeah, I'm on Great Northerns as well at the moment. Good summer um, beer, no spring beer, I, or even winter look, beer. I'm not much of a beer drinker. I drink spirits mostly, to be honest. Yeah, there you go. Oh, um, <laughs> Look at this man, this dis- disheveled man in the top right hand corner of the <laughs> screen. <laughs> I'll drink spirits. I don't have time to brush my hair. I just, the, the volume of beer gets me, do you know? The, it's, it, it's. Yeah, you got to drink heaps of it to get pissed. Like, yeah, I, I like. <laughs> I, so that's I'm why fine. I like beer. <laughs> I like having like one or two beers when it's hot. But if I'm out to have a good time, I'm not drinking beer. Matt drinks vodka and G fuel in his game of chair. <laughs> Cheers, Sam. I don't, yeah, I, mean, I, don't I don't mind the odd fucking um, club and dry, but I have to be on a fucking, yeah, that's, yeah. 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 Right. Cap- Captain Ball um, might go to with a bit of soda water. You want to buy someone a drink, buy Chook as much tequila as he can possibly get into him. Martinis, mate. 
Yeah, and mm-hmm. you know what? Leave it unattended on a table before transferring it to him. Oh, can we oh, fucking no. reference that? <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's, it's a new game. It's a new game TwitchCon's trying this year. It's called Date Rape Roulette. When you go up and take your chances of whether or not you're going to get fucking roofied. What the fuck? It's fucking 2019. I, Come on. I it's, the, the, it's the, the Twitch, Twitch owned by Amazon and they couldn't put a the, fucking bar on? Oh, the wow. Twitch, The Twitch partner party, how they're serving drinks. Here's 20 beers on, on a, a table, table, not grab refrigerated, one. not covered. Grab one and it's got a fucking placard in front of it saying what kind of fucking beer. Like, are you looking to fucking for like a, a civil suit? Twitch? Yeah, it's fucking Are you horrible. looking for a fucking civil suit? That. Yeah, it's, it's fucking um, it's it's ridiculous. disgraceful. It is fucking disgraceful. It's it's yeah, it's a bit rough. Yeah, there's the lager, there's the rohypnol. Like, fuck. Mm. Anyway. I pull your fucking neck in. We don't mean to make a lot of it, but it was just ridiculous. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't. Th- I mean, like, if you guys have any more questions, so just just a reminder, guys, is that if at the start of the stream at two p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, if you log, if you got an email from Eventbrite saying that you could get a ticket to the Beer Garden of Salvation, and you bought an Inner Sanctum ticket, the Heart of the Garden, we are. Oh, I personally am going to cancel that ticket because we are full um in for for that at we're at capacity so i'm going to cancel that ticket and bring the numbers back down to what we agreed with with um, packs and reboot i do apologize if you do get an email um that your ticket has been cancelled uh just go back to the website and just get a general admission ticket um yeah you'll and, have no dramas uh, it's you know there's plenty of them there to get and it's yeah everyone's going to be able to get in and it's just that we we're already at the initial capacity um, and it was basically, well, I, I want to say it was Eventbrite that fucked up, but it was probably just me. <laughs> that. Right. I'm sorry if I got your hopes um, up. A question from Zormanis. How you doing? Welcome. Uh, thank you for the question. If I, if you just started back up, is it worth unlocking all the subclasses before Shadowkeep or is it a waste of time? You can. Um, but just remember, come Shadowkeep, there is also new light and new light will uh, give you all of the character stats, like all of the unlocks and all that sort of thing. Um, the way that I understand it, it's going to give you all of the character um, classes, quicker, right, like. subclasses, and uh, and all that sort of thing. There's probably not really much point of it. You can if Wait, you want. You, you, your new light, what did you say? It's going to unlock all your subclasses. Well, new yeah, light I doesn't have access to the is. Forsaken era ones, like your Thunder Crash and no, whatever but else. Like, but the, the, other th- the other subclasses. Yeah, but when uh, you're... Oh, yeah, I don't know. Because I was thinking that because I've got just one Titan left that I haven't unlocked all of my uh, Sunbreaker yet. Just use it as an experiment. <laughs> it, it could be right. a guinea pig. And uh, you can learn I'm going to do it as a hunter as well. I'm going to make a hunter in that respect. A question from Sebi. Will there be an IRL stream of the beer garden? We, we are going to ask people not to do an IRL stream, uh, especially if they're in the heart of the garden. Because a lot of people with IRL streams, they just shove cameras in people's faces. And at the end of the day, yeah, they're just there to have just, a drink just and have a fuck chat. It, just yeah, enjoy just yourself. Don't, don't, don't IRL shake stream. hands, mate. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna go around with a camera and take photos of people who want to take photos and all that sort of thing. Because I'll probably be the, one of the more sober uh, one of us at, of hunting. Um, <laughs> I think we'll all and, be pretty well uh, behaved. Gonna, we'll go to the pub after yeah, and get loose, but... We'll go to the pub and get fucking rattled after. But um, yeah, I'll be going around with the camera, taking photos of people and all that sort of thing. And yeah, it, it we we are asking, ladies and gentlemen, please do not do IRL streams if you're in the heart of the garden. If you've got a ticket there, please. Right. Um, a question from Yo at Destiny Down Under. Thank you, man. Uh, do you think trials will be back year three because of that armor statement? Trials will make a return. I think something we don't know when some 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 semblance of trials of a more competitive mode of competitive will make a return at some point, but just not right now. Um, I don't know if it'll be year three, year four, year five. Who who knows? But yeah, they're trialing elimination in labs, so fuck, why not? Yeah, I think so. I think I think that's ultimately what it's all building to, and that's probably why you know there's a new ver new version of the um. Trials armor kicking around. I think it'll it'll probably all come to a head after Christmas sometime. I'm I'm having a guess. 
maybe at Christmas time. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll see what happens. Right. Do you, reckon we're going to, do, you um, reckon, from, do you guys reckon we're going to get a full blown Festival of the Lost this year, or do you reckon it's going to be a little bit subdued due to sort of the new content coming out? At the I start think it's of the delayed subdued because it was a month delayed. Yeah, it was. It's delayed, yeah, isn't it? No, oh, I mean, we could miss Shadow Keep. Keep Sorry. Delayed, yeah. Shadow Keep being delayed, yeah. they want to just focus on Shadow Keep. They might do a festival of the cost next season, but who knows? <laughs> who knows? Um, At the time, that was such right. an appropriate nickname, but I feel like maybe it's not quite anymore. It's pretty friendly and accessible. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> right. From Sour to Outlook, Mylan Games, would you ever do a lore video on that dead worm from the Books of Sorrow that belonged to Savathun's father? The white worm, the honest worm. Um, probably not. It, it, it was, it's probably sort of covered in my my books of books of sorrow. I don't I don't think there's any other references to the to the white worm. It's the um, the familiar of the uh, father of Oryx's dad, Daddy Hive. Daddy, Daddy Hive. <laughs> Daddy. But I am finding a bunch of stuff in um because this today I was rereading um Marasina's law book or Mara Mara's law book and um finding a bunch of references that I just completely missed that could be references to the pyramid ship that I didn't know about. I think that's the best um, thing was, about the way that the law is at the moment. And even I've had that as a fucking absolute law numpty reading through the things again and yeah. going Oh, that's what that was alluding to because I'm pretty slow on the uptake, so I probably missed it the first time around. But once you've got you understand the context that it's all happening in, it's yeah, I think it's they've done an incredible job. It's definitely going yeah. from strength mm-hmm. to strength. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, will it be a repeat of the Infinite Forest from Anna Mana? Um, maybe in regards to Fest of the Lost. Maybe. 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 I didn't hate that. Um, I didn't hate it. I think it it's gonna be a bit stale. I've had people. I've had people ask if they if they think Osiris is gonna make a bit of a return with the Vex, maybe give him a bit more of a character. Hey, well, um, he's annoying. hoping because he was as fucking dull as fucking Ben Shapiro last time. I mean, yeah, it, was, it was pretty dry. But it'll be, hey, it'll be interesting. Mean, to, maybe maybe that's what it's, maybe that's what it's building to, right? Like we've got this season, all this shit with the Vex. It needs to come to a close and transition into something else. And well, the next one's called what is it? Season of Dawn. So yeah, maybe so. maybe it is Osiris coming back, and they tie in trials with that, and they tie in like there's a few things they could bring to a head pretty fucking neatly. He's the mm. he's the kind of like the the Vex guardian, right? Like Tatolan's Hive guardian. <laughs> he's mm. that dude. So I mean, maybe maybe we will see him come back. I think it's a really good question, and I hope that they do that. Mm. Mm. Uh, question from Freak Gaming, a bit of a random one. Did you guys get any, any new phones recently? No. <laughs> well, I'm getting the the, um, the new iPhone came out or something, didn't it? <laughs> if you ever reference that piece of equipment on this podcast again, you're fucking banned. Do you use an iPhone, Matt? Look, I used to use an iPhone, yeah. So did I, and then I realized the error of my ways and I've never gone back. No, nah, I actually prefer the iPhone. I'm sorry. Oh. Get out. Get okay. out. This is this is the thing that fucking shits me about the Android, and it's all to do with the notifications on it. I hate the notifications on Android. Why? They're crap. Why? Hey, okay, oh, yeah. so for example, I've got you fucking numpties banging on all day in, in Twitter DMs, right? And yeah. then I've got other people that I actually need to respond to in my Twitter DMs, like Gamma Trap and some of the pack stuff. And rather than show me what's what, so I can just look at my screen because the iPhone used to say, you know, actually have a Twitter notification. Now I could see it's like, you know, Aussie, the Aussie one. And then I could see, oh, this is the PAX one. And I could see, oh, this is this one. It just lumps them all into, oh, you've got one Twitter no- it notification. It doesn't fucking do that yeah, shit. It, it fucking it kinda, does, mate. It kind of does. It kind of does. It I can does see why not. it not. That's yeah. fucking, you are, you have mute, to, you mute have your to fucking, no, 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 mute your no, fucking your your notifications. Wrong. You're wrong. And I've, I've got my fucking phone out there and it has fucking three different DMs from D, three different people. If and I can you, just go, mute, because you are a fucking look, technological ready? dumb cunt. No, no, look at that, right? Just little fucking symbols. If that was an iPhone, you'd be able to scroll through it without unlocking your phone. You can scroll through it. Fucking press them. Yeah, press and ready? Them. Ready? I will, yeah, it's going to be probably yeah, inappropriate yeah. dumb shit from you, right? Look, <laughs> there we go. Wait, let me find a Twitter one. All right. I'm just make sure it's not. 
Um. <laughs> okay. It's only showing me two notifications there. Oh, Slotted, you're a fuckwit. No, There's two is. things there. Are you saying to me, <laughs> are you saying to me, I only have two notifications on my Twitter right now? I've there got go. fucking way more than two that I would like go to Go onto through. your Twitter notifications and fucking play with the settings. That's not an iPhone setting. That's you, your inability to play with the fucking website, you no. dickhead. This is, this is absolutely the most random fucking argument that we've ever had. <laughs> it's you great. You're a I... technological dumb cunt, and I don't <laughs> no. understand why, because you're 30 you... and you... I am 40. You are fucking wrong, man. I have the amount of hours I spend trying to get do this. Get off your fucking you... Coles phone and go get a fucking proper one, you fucking numpty. It's an S9. Yeah, it's an uh, S9. It's a shut the fuck up, you absolute pillock. All right. All right. I'll, I'll bet. How much money you want to bet on this? Because I'm ready to fucking throw down money on this. How much money you want to bet that you can't you do what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know, I've, I can go to my phone right now. Boys. I can mute every single fucking DM. Boys. I'm not talking without unlocking it. I'm not fucking talking about muting. I'm talking about being able to screen your notifications individually, not you them can all do being that. lumped. You can do that on a fucking Into Android. Let's not. Let's not. I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a pin in this because it's just getting you stupid. Fucking nah, nah. Yeah. It's just, it just stop slinging names, Slotty. It's just silly. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> there it. Yeah, I'm sure we can work it out. <laughs> <laughs> you are a <laughs> look at this no. killing. You mate, you just don't have enough people fucking contacting you for to understand. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> so my Twitter is three completely daily fucking notifications. <laughs> my computer is complete my Twitter is completely fucking muted. I don't get notifications from that website. I get well, it from fucking you can't fucking, fucking messaging me yeah, about packs and that's oh it. Oh my god. Oi, you can fight. After the podcast, After. I don't give a shit. <laughs> oh my god! Anyway, Sloth's apparently the the most fucking well technologically versed boomer in history. So we'll, we'll see. <laughs> how am I? I'm fucking forty, not fucking sixty for one. Chook's not even a boomer. You play? Yes, he is. He's the boomerest of boomers. Anyway, oh, uh, what else is there? Someone ask a fucking question so we can stop talking about it. So we can this move shit. on. I'm so fucking angry because I know you can't do it and I, I'm ready to fucking yeah, throw it out. I, can. I agree with Matt, you actually. You fucking can. I agree Shut with Matt. Up. No. I agree. Yeah. Right. What do you guys think? Do you guys do you think the Crucible will be playable now, especially because they didn't talk about the nerfs? Yes. Um I don't know. I mean, I think there's a lot that they're holding close to their chest on that front. Uh, we haven't seen anything about One-Eyed Mask at all, and I'll be very surprised if that goes through to the next DLC completely unchanged. Um, so I think ultimately it'll probably be a bit of a friendly, friendlier place. The, um, the changes that normally come at the start of a season normally do that anyway because the metas sort of take a few weeks to settle and all that sort of stuff for people to really iron out what the most fucking opportune things to be using are. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think I think if you're going to jump in to the Crucible at any point, doing it with a launch of Shadowkeep is probably your best time because there'll be a whole heap of new players and they've restructured the fucking lobbies so that there's basically a sort of a gentle introduction into it. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, the new meta for Crucible come Shadowkeep, Scout Rifles and no. uh, 900 rounds per minute SMGs. No. No. I, don't, I can't see Scout Rifles getting that good. I think they'll be better. I don't think they'll ever be. And they just don't operate. They operate at a range that is just sniper rifle range, but you know, they're you know beaten what? by sniper rifles. I was complaining about this in Gambit last night. I can't wait for the MG change because, you know, on the Mars map in Gambit Prime on how big it is, I got fucking out-sniped by an, uh, a fucking Thunderlord using a Beloved um, last night uh, on, on Gambit. I cannot wait for the fucking MG change. I cannot yeah, fucking it's, it's wait. It's pretty rude. I, hammerhead. Fuck the Hammerhead. I mean, I use Hammerhead. But... Fuck the Thunderlord. <laughs> fuck the truth. I, I use fucking thund, uh, Hammerhead. Before that, I used Thunderlord, so I can't really fucking be too nasty about it, but it is. It is what it is. Yeah. 
Uh, there was an interesting question here before. Uh, Orion, Cygnus, uh, how is the Red Wall going to work if you never lose your light? I believe that you will lose your light. Like you can still go through and do the story, but you will not be at light level zero. You'll be at light level 750. Yeah, I, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how that functions actually. Oh, yeah. Mm. Very weird. Mm -hmm. Very weird. Um, where's the golden age we were promised when the Traveller woke up two fucking years ago? <laughs> it's, it's taking a little bit of time to come it's around. Whip. It? Work in progress. <laughs> yeah, it's a fucking whip. He's come on. He's a giant inanimate orb. How much shit do you think he can really get done? <laughs> Maybe the golden mm. age is here. It's just not here. It's somewhere else. It's like you know, like how the, the traveler fucked off from like, abandoned the fallen. Maybe that's what's going to happen. He's like, oh, we'll see you yeah. later. Another golden age somewhere else. Fuck you guys. What what's our triumph score? I can tell Matt's Matt's is nineteen thousand. I've got about thirty eight thousand, and Log's about thirty five thousand. No, I'm just under forty, I think. Oh yeah, 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 nice. Yeah, I think Enormous. I don't know off uh, the top of my head. I know that I'm really near to a round number, and that's the only reason I care about it because I've got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm looking at it going, oh, I'm nearly at that round number. Maybe it is thirty five. I can't remember. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, any more for any more um, yeah, I have a fix don't play Gambit I've got the 21% Delirium I'm not going to go for Dwedgen and I'm not going to go for Hush so yep uh, any more questions ladies and gentlemen any more for any more um, what's happened this week in, in gaming not really a great deal yeah fucking Activision and the Playstation exclusive for oh. uh Call of Duty. A fucking shit. Fight a year. That was. A year exclusive so, game mode. If you are uh, unsure what's happening, so for a Call uh, of Duty. Activision for Call of Duty. Yeah, Activision oh, did a another exclusivity deal with Sony, which gives a one year exclusivity to <laughs> a special operations game mode in Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Yep. Um, it is also. As per fucking Activision's uh, normal operating procedures, fucking packed to the fucking gills with microtransactions. Yep. And you know what? The fucking Call of Duty, and I'm really actually quite proud of the Call of Duty community, is that they're calling Activision out on the bullshit. It's just out of hand, hey. I'm so fucking glad that's a chapter that we've, we've closed on Destiny and we we don't have to look at going back to crap like that because, like, that's shit. I mean, Call of Duty is a fucking yearly franchise. So you're locked out yeah. of a fucking game mode for the, the game's the life cycle. Be out. Yeah. Mm. Who gives a shit? You might as well not even just say it's an exclusive for forever because no one's going to cycle back. playing Black Ops 4 right now? <laughs> Apparently the servers are as lively as a swingers sex party at a hip replacement ward, so... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, the, the... I mean, the uh, irony could be that there might be more sex at that fucking ward because their hips are good now. Yeah, right. Yeah, true. Right. Um, but a question... A, 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 a <laughs> my, comment, body, a comment, my body hips. A comment that came up last <laughs> night from um, Zane445 actually on stream <laughs> is that... Um, I'm really fucking glad that the video game industry is starting to look back into, like developers, sound engineers, voice actors are starting to look into um, unionizing. Yeah, I think ultimately it'll end up going that way. Yeah, and it'll be, I see what, about that. I really, I cannot wait for the the developers and the like all of the people working at ground level um, to actually be unionized so the companies can't fuck them over. And every single aspect of the video game industry does need to be unionized because you know what? They've gotten away with shit for too long. Too long. Yeah. It's, I think like any new industry, like, and when you think about it, like video games as an industry is really only well, nearly 40 years old, I suppose in mm. the eighties moving forward. Um, and that, in the grand scheme of things, is a relatively young industry. Um, so, and it's a big industry with a shitload of money in it. So, it surprises me that this hasn't been pushed before. But it also doesn't surprise me because it'd be pretty uh, powerful people with invested interests in not having it happen. And I'm not saying that there's anything untoward going on, but I'm saying that there's probably something untoward going on. <laughs> uh, there are 100 percent is things uh, are things untoward going on. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, there's yeah, some we, of my fucking hatred them. of a particular person. 
Um, That's not the only reason he's been able to get away with it uh, is because people don't have people's backs. They're, yeah, it is what it is. It's so yep. fucked. Anyway, yep. all right. Um, Doom and gloom. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well. All right. All right. All right. Um, so the uh, I think I mean that that's that's the that's that's probably about the point of where we've talked ourselves to a standstill. That's a two hour podcast. So fucking hope you enjoyed it. My back that in your pipe and smoke it, <laughs> and fucking make sure you know what. I don't want to say this, but I do at the same time. Have you ever busted through toilet paper? Dear. I think everyone Why does has. He do this? Because he's a weirdo. I think everyone has at some point in their life. So it's a low moment. It's a low mm. moment. It's like, mm. you know, it's like I'm stepping in dog shit, ceiling. mate. We don't, we don't talk about those things. We just get on with life. And I think that's what we all need to be doing at this point. Just move on. It's okay. <laughs> Tragedy right. happens. Uh, and and <laughs> Spider-Man is back in the MCU. Fantastic. Oh, yes. ladies, ladies and gentlemen. There's the positive note we needed to end the fucking Wait, podcast what? on. Yeah, Spider-Man's back he's in the back MCU. In the- Oh, I missed that. I yeah. haven't seen that. Yeah, yeah. okay. All right. Yeah. Um, and uh, just before we go, a uh, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sherbert. Happy birthday to you. That was I feel, really, that, I feel right. really awkward now. Yeah, you should. Right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you're in the live chat, thank you very much for hanging out. Uh, thank you for the brand new subs, the hosts, the follows, and all that sort of thing. Make sure you check out the Gleam competition. Make sure you check out the Eventbrite. Uh, make sure you check out the Eventbrite thing if you go into PAX Oz. If you're an audio-only listener, thank you very much for the uh, uh, continued support. If you missed anything, hit us up on Twitter at DDU underscore podcast at LogPowerSlave at Marlon Games at Realtime Sloth. And if you are on YouTube, uh, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. If you have, uh, if you have any fucking, uh, if you enjoyed the episode and you like the content that we release, make sure you hit that bell. You won't get any notifications because you know YouTube. They just don't know whether they're coming or going. It's just. Did, did we ridiculous. talk about them um, going back uh, on the verification? I reckon They've they back shit their pants because you were blowing up on the they, podcast. They heard Matt's they, like, fuck this, fucking I'm fucking done. Themselves. But, but right. I mean, seriously, when you multiply that by literally everyone in your position doing exactly the same thing across the world, it's a pretty fucking big backlash, right? Yeah, yeah. that would have had some notifications. Um, yeah. just, just, remember, just remember, guys, uh, if you go and watch people like Epos Box and Matt, Mylan Games and all those sort of people, um, watch through the entire video, watch through the adverts and all that sort of thing, but fucking really think about supporting them monetarily through a third party, i.e. like Patreon or something like that, because YouTube just takes so much. I was listening to Matt this morning and his MCN takes fucking 60%. The YouTube and then YouTube does. takes, uh, sorry, YouTube takes yeah. 66%. His, his MCN takes what, fucking 20%? Nickels like, on the dimes games ridiculous. over here in the corner. It's, you know, like. <laughs> Nickel on the dimes, yeah. <laughs> I, used to only, I used to only walk away with 20%. Oh, God. Yeah. So, you know, like just just think about supporting <laughs> if you like the content, think about supporting the content creators in uh, in a in a uh, like in a third party role like uh, Patreon or something because it takes money away from uh, Google and YouTube and the more <clears throat> the more money that they that gets taken away because of content creators moving to a third party income source maybe then they'll actually try and reform their system and actually try yeah. and fix it so it's not completely fucked. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, on the, and on that note, um, yeah, weekly reminder that YouTube is the biggest pile of steaming shit on this platform. And Stop I it. hope that Pornhub, I hope that Pornhub uh, operates a, uh, a, a, a YouTube-esque type of situation soon because they have the, 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 the software to do it. But until then, we have been the Destiny Down Under podcast and uh, we're excited for Shadow Keep and we'll see you that. See you. At PAX after it's on released Friday week. Yeah, I know. Well, right? I mean, Next time we see everyone, it'll be it'll be out. You know, like it's yep. it's, it's cool. That's cool. And then, and then we've got one episode, and then PAX. PAX. It's all yeah. fucking yeah. coming to a head, boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're in the end game now. We're in the end game, We're in the end game now. All oh, right, yeah. you got something weird to say? You fucking bearded Obi Wan knockoff. <laughs>
The notifications will not find you. <laughs> yeah, um, the law, the law will find you. It will be, but you won't see it because it'll be buried in a clustered notification on your fucking piece of shit Android phone. Stand by for a raid. We're going to go raid the biggest fucking, the biggest fucking dude in the Destiny community, bar none. Mr. Young Khan, who's over there doing hey, some fantastic hell stuff. Yeah. He actually lifts um, like quite a lot of weight and he's very big and he doesn't fucking show it off either. So he's a legend. Um, go over he's there, the say good day. He's a fucking legend. Go say good day. And uh, until then, we've been the DDU and we'll uh, see you at PAX. See you, sucker. Bye. <laughs>